Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick uh, dropping in on you. Uh, it's Monday morning and normally I wouldn't be on this particular topic this early in the morning, but it's a lot going on. Uh, I am leaving the Juvenile Justice Center downtown uh, standing in uh, for someone I know um, leave it at that but um, we are and I've been saying this is not anything that we are losing our children I uh, received a report uh, about a young kid in Chicago 14 years old shot and killed the man who was assaulting his mom child should never have been put in that situation or position uh, there's so much going on and from where I'm sitting I think there's awareness there's an awareness of it but at the same time uh, we're far too casual about what's happening with our children it's easy to sit up and say these children these days um and not really examine causality, examine environment, examine influence. Um, and what I do as an advocate it is a small part of what needs to be done. Um, I'm going to fight for our youth. I refuse to give up on our youth. I refuse to ignore uh, the responsibility of my generation and what we are seeing right now. Um, the truth of the matter is, if we are where we're supposed to be and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, then we are not looking at the magnitude of this type of situation um, we're not looking at the magnitude and the volume of children who are getting caught up in the system before they're even of adult age um, so we have some culpability and responsibility in what we're seeing and we need to deal with that we also need to understand that yes the system is designed to do what it's doing and to create what we're seeing to keep us at bay and to keep us from where we are trying to be. And what we have to do is move beyond complaining about what's happening and start taking action. Complaining is not a strategy, nor is it a plan. Whining is neither a strategy nor a plan. A plan is something you sit down and you look at all of the factors and you take as much of an educated approach at solving the issue through proactive engagement as possible. What I can tell you about my people, black people, is that we're more than capable. We have the capacity we even have the tenacity, we have the creativity, the imagination, the intellect. What we don't seem to have is a will. We don't seem to have a will to be actively engaged in this warfare in which the future of our race is at hand. It is unfortunate, but it is the truth. We are lethargic, is, is this body as good? We are unengaged, unattached, indifferent to the plight of our people. And 
those who are in the throes of this, those who are literally taking the brunt of this, are going to be closer to the poverty line, have less resources, less awareness, less knowledge, and those of us who do don't seem to care. Or we're too busy being caught up in our own personal individual situations. And yes, I am a firm believer in taking care of home first. But I'm also a believer that we have to function and operate as a unit, as a group, as a race, because we are being handled as such. Um, we are constantly reminded of where we stand in the pecking order. We are uh, consistently at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. And everybody seems to get ahead. And while there are definitely these mechanisms and systems at play that influence our ability in a negative way to make progress, our inactivity, our compliance to the system, our complacency in where we're at is creating that. This child in Chicago, mom decided to confront some dude, dude look young, maybe late 20s, confront him about something at this obvious, probably Asian-owned uh, chicken center or whatever. They were on the inside at the auto window. And they're arguing. And this young black male decides to hit this woman. She did not hit him. She was not directly in his space. Matter of fact, she was out of the frame, so she was at least a foot away from him so she was no immediate threat and he tells her say one more word and she's still talking and she's saying whatever and he hauls off and he hits her and he doesn't stop he's hitting her like he's trying to knock out a dude and there's another frame of the child pulling the gun and you know I don't watch snuff stuff so I didn't watch the shooting but this 14 year old kid was told to hold his gun while she goes to confront this dude. He's got it in the pockets of his hoodie. And you can see his reaction when he sees his mom being hit, he pulls the gun and cocks it and then he starts to shoot. And now he and his mother are arrested. A person is dead. And I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I'm not about, you know, senseless killing and anything like that but any man that puts his hand on a woman like that without in, 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 in any way having to defend himself that's the only way if somebody's got a weapon or is trying to harm you and you need to defend yourself maybe but because she's yapping at you 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 beat her like a dude you know i hate that he lost his life but that I, I'm like this, keep your hands off our women. And I know our women can come at you and do some things that I don't know what went wrong. And I'm not saying, I'm saying number one, what I saw, she had no business taking that kid up. That she probably had no business going up there and confronting dude in the first place. But people feel they have a right to have certain issues addressed. She obviously felt she had that right, What she did not have a right to do was bring a 14 year old son up there and put him in the middle of it and arm him. And now, even if he some kind of way gets out of it because this dude was beating on his mom, he's gonna be scarred for life. That's not something you wanna put on a 14 year old. So that's a decision that someone other than he initiated or facilitated. And we have to look at, there's a lot of this in our communities. And like, unlike some of my peers, I'm not willing to walk away from my community. I'm not willing to sit up and say, leave them to themselves. I believe that my gifting and my knowledge and what I've been able to learn and do 
is to help those who can't help themselves. But I'll tell you, we've got to do something. We are losing our kids. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Before you go blame it all on low-income black families, the predominance of the kids I work with, outside of the group stuff I do with black men leading all of that, the clientele I have are from upwardly mobile black families. These kids have all of the financial support and access to stuff that their white counterparts have, and we still have a problem. It runs deep. Now the problems manifest themselves differently, but they exist because no matter how much money you make, you can't escape your blackness. And until we really understand that, we are going to, as we become more upward, upwardly mobile, actually make our children more vulnerable. The idea that money provides insulation works in some areas, but it will never remove your blackness, the first thing a person sees. So you can't ever tell me in a, in a, in a racial caste system, and this happens to be a white racial caste system, but in a racial caste system, you can't tell me when your race is noticeable by vision that it doesn't play a role. It's the first thing people see. They don't see a man when they see me, they see a black man. When I went into court today to stand in um, and, and, and support uh, this young man and his, and his family, They saw, they didn't see a, a psychologist. They didn't see a, a community leader. They saw a black psychologist, a black community leader. I understand that. And that's why I went in there and to represent them. That's why I went in there to stand with them. And, and I'm going to continue to do what I do. But I'm telling you, this stuff gets heavy because it comes every day. It's not a day that something's going on. You see the child going missing, a child in trouble, a child getting attacked. It, and that's just one element and component, but to me it's so important. We can't keep talking about the children of our future and doing nothing whatsoever to protect them. That's not how it works. We can't keep doing that. You know, children of our future, the children of our future. We've got to treat them with that type of love and care and value. If they are our future, we have a responsibility to protect them. So, I really am going to be pushing for more support. I'm going to be pushing for more participation. I'm going to be pushing for more people to be involved. But sitting around pretending that this isn't happening is unacceptable. Saying it's not my problem is unacceptable. So, with that being said, look, I'm gonna get off, try to get my head right, because I gotta get back to my office and get back into the flow of things. But this is something that we actually cannot continue to see and do nothing about. And so, that's where I'm gonna leave it. I'm going to get off here and try to get my head right. But you guys, thank you for letting me invade your space a little. And we will talk soon. I'm out.